Even as we continue to sing, let us just reflect of who Christ is in our lives because he's the center of it all and he gave himself up for ourselves. We are just filthy, but he has called us to be his children. And even as we reflect of the reading that was read this morning, let us delight in him, let us seek him, let us serve him, let us worship, and let us just go before him even as we sing and worship into his name.
take this chance, oh God, to honor you and to serve you and to give you all the praise and all the glory this morning. We have gone through so many things this week and Lord, we declare, we declare them before you. And Lord, we pray that you may also give us comfort in our distress. May you come through for us, oh God, when we feel like we have no other person to run to the Lord. And Lord, even as we continue to seek your face, may you show us of who you are. May we create, Lord, a relationship with you this morning. May you teach us, Lord, your ways. May you bless, O oh God, and build us, O oh God, in who you want us to be, Lord, this morning. Thank you. Worthy to be praised, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor this morning.
our God, how majesty is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of the babies and infants. You have established strength because of your faults to steal the enemy and the virgin. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the, the, the moon and the stars, when you have set in the place, what is man that you are mindful of, and the son of man that you, are, you care for, yet you have made him a little lower than the heavens being, they crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion all over the world and everything. And Lord, we want to thank you that you have been so gracious. All the adonation, all the glory and honor goes back unto you. Lord, we thank you because when we look at down, when we think of the things that you have done, O oh God, truly your majesty is above all other things, O oh God. We thank you because of many things that you have done in our lives. We thank you because there's no other God like you. We thank you because of this man that you are mindful of, Lord. We humbly request you and pray with you that you forgive us this day. Forgive us because we have done again, we have gone against your word, O oh God. None of us who stand before you, none of us who does great and anything that is pleasing to you, O oh God. Please, Lord, we pray. And pray with you that you forgive us and you cleanse us, O oh God. Lord, anything that may make you not to listen to our prayers this day. That, Lord, anything that may make you not to listen to our praises today, O oh God. Anything that may make you not to listen to our thanksgiving from our hearts, O oh God. O oh Lord, we cry to you that you may forgive us and you may cleanse us, O oh Lord. You are the creator when you created everything. By the word of your mouth, Lord, you made things to be established. That's the reason why we are giving all the glory and honor unto you, O oh God. Thank you because of the nations. Lord, the Bible, your word tells us that the time that people will ask, where is your God? But we trust and we know that you are our, our Lord, O oh God. Therefore, we continue to pray and pray with you that you may continue to be gracious to our nations, O oh God. Thank you because of the people who have not known you, O oh God. Thank you because of us who have known your love, your care, your protection, O oh God. That, Lord, may you help us to go out and to reach the people that who do not know you, O oh Father. You be gracious to us as Kawes Baptist Church. May you walk with us and guide us. May you be gracious to us, O oh Father. We thank you and we exalt you because there is no other God like you. Thank you because of our country, Kenya, O oh God. Thank you because of the peace that you have given unto us, O oh God. We don't take it for granted. Thank you because of many things that have continued to happen. Lord, we believe that, Lord, leadership comes from you. Lord, as we wait for this week to be announced the president of this country, we still continue to plead with you. We believe that, the Lord, you are sovereign. There is nothing that happens without you knowing, O oh God. That we continue to pray and to pray with you that, Lord, even the judges as they sit down and deliberate, we pray for them. That, Lord, they will have the desirement from you, O oh God. That, Lord, you will speak to their hearts and their minds, O oh God. That, Lord, there is nothing that will happen without you knowing because you are God and our Father. So we thank you and we exhort you. Continue to, to relate with one another, O oh God. Your word is still calling us to be one as you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Therefore, we pray with you that, Lord, we will be able to look at other person so important than ourselves, that we may continue to relate with them and to know that you are the Lord and God. So we surrender ourselves to you. We dedicate ourselves to you this day, that, Lord, you may speak to our hearts, that you may speak to our minds, that, Lord, you, your will may be, be, be done because you are good and you are good, God. For this we pray 
in Jesus name you may have your seat good morning bonus if you I would like to invite the children to come um, the children watoto wakuja ili tuweze kuomba ili waweze kuingia kwa their classes yeah the children to come and if you're seated with your child please allow them to go to their classes so that they can continue to learn God's word that would be very helpful the Bible says that train the children the way they should go even when they are old they will never learn away our God is the one who knows how to teach them his word so allow us to pray for them sovereign lord we thank you because of the gift of children he says that your word that um, children are a gift from you lord you know how better that they can be able to learn your word you know how better they can be able to understand your word oh god as you do that lord we pray that lord you continue to be gracious to the teachers that sovereign lord you continue to work in their hearts and their minds that even as they open the scriptures to these children that they will be able to articulate them well and even when these children lord they will get to a place whereby they want to know you we pray and pray with you that they will choose you they'll be of great help to our country to our society to your church and to their families oh god because you're good and you're good god so be gracious to them and be good to them for this we pray in jesus name amen we can appreciate them as they go to their sunday school classes and i would love to invite um the announcement yes and as the announcement goes on the choir be prepared to come yeah immediately after the announcement you'll be coming thank you Praise the Lord, everyone. Buona sifiwe. We are glad to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, we should. Uh, my name is Peter Mbugu. I've come just to make a few announcements uh, that uh, we need to, uh, to know. And uh, before I do that, I want to know that whether we have any visitors today for the first time. So if you're there and you chose to come to a service today for the very first time, I would wish you lift up your hand so that we can recognize you and somebody can give you an envelope. Uh, if you're there, you can raise up your hand with me. Yeah, we have a sister here. Let's appreciate her. Thank you, sir, so much. Anyone else? Ashes, kindly of attend to her. Anyone else that has come for the first time? Well, we have another sister at the corner there. Let's appreciate. Yeah, thank you. So anyone else before? I'm through with. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, may the Lord bless you. Just after this service, you'll be guided by the usher. We have a hospitality room at the front of the church here, and we invite you there just to have a word with them. Let them know you a little bit more. They will also, you'll also sign our visitor's book as we have a small refreshment together. May the Lord bless you so very much. Um, the next announcement is about tomorrow, every Monday from uh, 5.30 to uh, 7.30 p.m. We have corporate prayers here in the, in the church. So we are all invited. After you've done with your day, you've worked, your business, you can come here and wind up uh, uh, with prayer uh, with the other brethren. Our pastors are in attendance, and may the Lord bless you. I also want to always mention that we have a prayer room at that complex there, the very last floor, we call it the upper room. You can camp in the quietness of the day and have prayers there. Uh, we have a good room that is prepared for all of us. Uh, today, as you can see, 
the service is being led by youth, so they are no longer, today they are not meeting in their regular place at the, at the complex. They are here, and they will lead us both in this service and the Swahili service. So you can see that our future leaders are taking charge, and we thank God that as we retire, our youth are going to take over the running of the church, and we thank the Lord. So you'll see a lot more of them, and we thank God for them. Uh, today, we also have a church council meeting immediately after the Swahili service. All the church council members are requested to avail, them, to, are requested to avail themselves, kindly come with a one-page report, um, and be pantour. We shall be meeting at the uh, dining hall. <laughs> Let me see the, the DH, is it? <laughs> the Matipapas Hall, sorry, um, I've been corrected. Yeah, the Matipapas Hall. Um, we also have Bible studies that are going on before and after the English service, and they are as follows. The women Bible study happens from 8 a.m. That is the English Bible study. We also have uh, one from 10 a.m. That is for those who do Kiswahili and Kikuyu. So if you want to attend any of those Bible studies, we have teachers who are available for you. So ladies, 8 a.m. is the English, English one. At 10 a.m., we have Kiswahili and Kikuyu. Men meet after uh, this service, the English service, and we meet at the boardroom uh, from 11 a.m. We are currently studying the book of 1 John, so you can join us. The youth Bible study is, also happens at 11 a.m. after this service. We also have an announcement from ladies. All ladies are reminded of their prayer breakfast on Saturday, 10th of September. That is the coming one here at the sanctuary. And this will happen from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. It's good to come early in the morning and meet with the Lord uh, so you are invited. Uh, we also have uh, an, uh, a thanksgiving. Uh, we want to thank those people who attended the evangelism training session yesterday. There was a training for uh, evangelism. All those who attended, we thank God for you. And next time we call, it's for every one of us in the church so that we can come and be taught how to disciple, how to go out and do some outreach. So next time, let us join with the others. Then we have a final announcement about Shosho Lois. Um, we know about her, or those who do not know, I'm sure you've been explained. Uh, she used to be a member here, old. She moved to Nakuru, and she passed on. So her burial will happen on 6th of September in Oljororok, Nakuru. So we are requesting those who want to attend uh, can register at the church office after here for logistics. So we may need to know uh, the issues concerning transport. So if you want to attend, kindly register at the church office, and the Lord will bless you. Thanks so very much. Enjoy the other part of the service. And our choir is coming. Asti Asti, very bright and looking good. Let's appreciate them. Thank you so much.
Praise God, everyone. Praise God again. Uh, my name is Peter Kamau, and uh, I have a nickname that is quite known by many of us, which is Miles. So you can feel free to um, refer to me by any of those. I'm going to be your service leader. I'm super happy to be here with you guys, and I want to welcome you for the same. Um, I want to do a few things while I'm here, and the first thing that I want to do is I want to, as I welcome you, help you uh, leave this service having understood or answered the question, what is Youth Sunday? Uh, it is a question that has, I have seen around in the course of the week, and I'd like us to understand that. But even so, um, more so, I want us to reflect on the theme for this year's Youth Sunday. Uh, what does that theme um, look like for us and what does it mean for us? So having understood the theme, you will understand two things. Um, one, you'll understand why we need Youth Sunday. The other one, you'll understand what is the objective, what is your objective? Uh, what is the objective of the planning team for this Youth Sunday? And then now I'll give you um, an announcement about what you, ha uh, you have been prepared for after this service. Now that it is Youth Sunday, then it is not a usual service. Um, and I want to answer the question, what is Youth Sunday? Uh, to answer this question for you, I will take you to a small um, writing or text that had been drafted by one of our um, committee members. And I'll request anyone who's projecting to uh, project Timothy 4.12. Timothy 4.12. Fast. First, 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 Timothy. First, Timothy, 4.12. Yes, um, it reads, let no, my, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. And so just to read um, the portion that I have uh, requested to share with you, it says that this day, Youth Sunday, is a day that serves as a reminder to we, the church, of the words in this good book, which you just read from, my fellow um, members fellowshipping with us here. Youth Sunday provides you with a perfect opportunity to demonstrate to the church that discipleship is ageless. That even at our young age, we can be true followers of Christ. Sorry. So be it in our conversations or in our teachings, or in our mannerism, we ought to maximize this very opportunity that has been given to us by Christ to prove that we are indeed the salt of the earth as it is written in Matthew 5. So I'm requesting you to forget, uh, together with the team that was planning for you, um, I'm requesting you to forget the pomp and color, forget the program, forget the dress code, forget the attendance. Our attendance agendas, our goal is to all fellowship in Christ and in him alone. Uh, the theme there um, of his, I don't know if they have the poster, you can project the poster. The theme is love and unity. The theme of Youth Sunday is love and unity. Um, and I'm really blessed to uh, be given the chance to speak on the same. For which according to me, what I understand is unity is a practice that results out of love that is present between whoever we are talking about here in this context. So for Kahawa West Baptist Church to be able to fully and effectively uh, practice what our annual uh, theme is, which is also um, our theme for Youth Sunday, um, to reflect on the fact that we were called to unity in Christ, then the best way we can arrive at that is through practicing love the practice of it, not the knowledge of it just, but the practice of the same, the practice of love. Um, Ephesians 4.23, which is our theme verse for today, um, Christ shares with us that he says, be completely humble and gentle. So he's trying to bring out how can we get there. So one, he's requesting us to be completely humble and gentle. He's requesting us to be patient with one another bearing with one another in love. So he's already alluding to the fact that there might be hiccups. 
here and there every so often when we are together. But he's asking us to be humble, gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love, making every effort, not just little effort, but every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace that we have. And so I want to give you um, an opportunity to practice this today. Uh, most of the time when you come to the service, you pop in, you sit where you, you, um, you prefer sitting. Most of us have favorite places for sitting. The service is over. You've given. You leave. You get your car. Or if you're on Fitsubishi, you do that. And you're home. And then week after week, that's what you do. But that is not what Christ has called us to. His main objective is not for us to come to church, fellowship with him, and live. But he's calling us to fellowship with one another. And so um, I can see that the service is seriously packed. I had, uh, I had an agenda to ask you to say hi to somebody, but since this might take the sum on time, I will challenge you that after this service, um, after the Kiswahili service, um, that is in the afternoon, around 12.30, I want to challenge you to consider any effort that you can do within yourself to make an effort and to know one person. Now, uh, uh, when, you, when you're considering who to know, who to interact with, you know, um, please ensure that it is either somebody older than you or younger than you. Yes. That cuts across. So you see, if you're a youth, you'd also make an effort to know a, a, a Sunday school child um, or know one of our parents here, you know. Then don't know the person whom you're used to. You see, uh, for example, I know that uh, Mr. Kigoshi's daughter would perhaps want to interact with the dad. Uh, save yourself that. You guys are going to meet at home. Um, make an effort to know somebody whom you see, but you have zero idea of who they are. And just get to know, how do they find service? How do they find service here in Kahawes Baptist, you know? Um, for the purpose of that, um, after Kiswahili service, um, uh, outside the multi-complex, uh, multi-purpose hall, sorry, not multi-complex, multi-purpose hall, you'll see tables um, arranged and tea and refreshments provided. Kunyo yo chai kwa gari, hapa ya kanisa, Kwa ofisi kama uko na if you're privileged, but get to interact with somebody over a few minutes um, after that, and the Lord will bless you all. I'd like to invite the scripture reader to take us through scripture reading. Thank you very much. Praise God. Uh, my name is Winnie and I'll be your scripture reader. Uh, let us all stand for the reading of the scripture. It comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 10 to 18. And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan to go, into, to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you saying, the the, the Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But all the men of valor among you shall pass over armed before, before your brothers and shall help them until the Lord gives rest to your brothers as he has to you. And they also take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and shall possess it, the, the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan towards the sunrise. 
And they, and they answered Joshua, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. And may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your word, whatever you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. That's the word of God. Good morning. My name is Victor Mwendwa. I'm glad to be here this day. It's the day of the Lord. Before I preach, I'd like to sing a song, and I call you to join me to sing this song, Onward Christian Soldier. We know the song? Yes? No? Onward Christian Soldier from Himnari. <coughs> Here we have the lyrics. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before. Christ the royal master, leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before. Other sign of triumph, Satan's host doth flee. On the Christian soldiers, on to victory. Hell's foundations quaver, other shout of praise. Brothers, lift your voices, loud your anthems raise. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, marching on before. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are trading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we. One in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before the last stanza. Onward, then, ye people, join a happy throne. Blend with all your voices in the triumph song. Glory, loud and honor unto Christ the King. 
This through countless ages, men and angels sing. On what Christian soldiers marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Let's pray. Our good word in heaven, we say thank you because you are good. Say so thank you because of this moment that you've given us, how we can gather in this place and sit under your teaching. We ask that your word may have a free course in our hearts. May it perform that which you've purposed for it to do in our lives. May it mold us, may it rebuke us, may it conform us to the image and to the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. May you be exalted, may you be glorified through the preaching of your word, O oh God. May you bless us, for it is in Christ's name we pray. We are on the series of studies through the book of Joshua. Joshua is God's servant, just like Moses was. Moses was called by God, equipped by God, and did the same thing that we see in the book of Joshua chapter 1, God himself again calling for himself a servant and equipping him for the work that is ahead of him. The book of Joshua was written by Joshua himself, larger part of it, but when you open in the last chapter, chapter 24, you realize that it records the death of Joshua, meaning that Joshua was not the one who wrote the last chapter of the book. Someone else did the writing. But bigger chunk of the book has been written by him. Joshua was called by God in times when the Israelites needed leadership the most. They are at the verge of the rivers of Jordan, about to get into the land of inheritance as God had promised his servant Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12. And so the children of Israel, they are about to claim their inheritance as God had promised them. And we know the nature of our God, his attributes, that our God is good, and that he is a God who respects his word. He does not change. He keeps his counsel. He observes to do everything that he has commanded and that he has given a decree out. And so in the book of Joshua chapter 1, you realize that now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Many years ago, God gathered his children to speak to them, to instruct them, to give them guidelines and directives that they should observe for them to have a prosperous life, for them to have a good success. And this day you realize we, as Kahawa West Baptist Church, God has gathered us here in this place that he may direct us, that he might instruct us, and that we as a church, as we go out of this place, we should come out of this place having responded to his address. The topic of today's sermon is Christ's address and church response. Jesus' address and church response. Christ has gathered us here to address us and we should respond 
to his word and the outline will come from the topic we are going to look at Christ's address and church response it's my prayer that you leave this place having heard your master and having responded to his message so this book again clearly shows us that God is the architect, he is the builder, he is the restorer, he is the owner of the nation of Israel. And to ask this day, how is this relevant? Christ, he is the architect, he is the builder, he is the owner of the church. The church has one foundation. This is Jesus Christ, him alone. He directs, he commands, he instructs us as a people. He is our captain just like Joshua was the captain of the armies of the Israel. Christ is our captain. We draw our strength, we draw our command, we draw our instructions from our captain who is Jesus. And so Joshua begins by telling us that Moses is dead. Reminding us of the dispensability of men. Again, reminding us of the indispensability of God. Men may die, but God's work must move on. No one is the custodian, is the custodian of God's work. No one is the custodian of Kahawa West Baptist Church. No one is the custodian of the church but Christ himself. Moses died and his death did not deter the children of Israel from marching on and possessing the land of inheritance. People die but God's work moves on. Church belongs to Christ. He purchased it with his own blood. He paid the utmost price. He ascended upon that hill, a bloody place called Golgotha. He died for us. He paid the sinner's price that you and me, we can have this moment. We can have access into the heavenly courts. And therefore Christ, he is the captain. He is the commander of this great army seated in this place. That's why every day we sit here, we like to hear from him. His word is sweeter than honey. His word directs us. His word makes us wiser unto salvation. And therefore, no one is the custodian of God's work. Moses is dead and God is calling to himself another man to lead his people. He calls and commissions Joshua. And we see another language used in chapter 1 of the book of Joshua. We see the word Jordan. So they are camping in a place called Shittim. And they are about to be instructed to march towards the verge of the rivers of Jordan. Many people teach and believe that Jordan symbolizes death. Jordan does not symbolize death in the Bible. Many people teach and believe that crossing the Jordan and entering into the land of promise symbolizes us dying and entering into the heavens. That is not the message being given in the book of Joshua. Jordan and the land of Canaan is not a picture of death and the heavens. In heaven, there is no fighting. In Canaan, they were to fight. So Canaan is a picture of a militant church. Our lives, our everyday lives, we fight as long as we are in this part of eternity. Every day, so long as you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have enrolled into his army. And you must march onward with the cross of Jesus leading you, directing you, giving you strength and confidence and courage that is needed for you to subdue the enemy. So in the land of Canaan, the Israelites were to fight. There was death, there was pain, there was sorrow. And in heaven, there is no death, there is no sorrow, there is no pain. 
In heaven there is no enemies. There are no territories for us, you know, to take. But in Canaan, there were enemies and there were territories for them to take. So Canaan is never and is not a picture of heaven. And so we see Canaan is not a picture of heaven as many teach and Jordan does not symbolize death as many believe. And so Christ, who is our Joshua today, he is our captain. He commands the church. Joshua commands and leads Israeli armies against its force. And Christ today commands and leads the church against its enemies. In the book of Ephesians, you remember the whole armor of God. It's spiritual warfare. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. And so Christ is the one who is leading, is the one who is commanding us as a people. Now let me get into today's outline. Christ address. Then Joshua, verse 10, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare you victuals for within three days he shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word of the, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and has given you this land. Your wives and your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren, armed all the mighty men of valor, and help them, until the Lord has given your brethren rest, and he has given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the, rising, the sun rising. So Joshua is addressing the children of Israel. He's calling all the officers, representing all the tribes. But to be more specific now, he narrows this conversation to two and a half tribes, the tribe of Reubenites, the tribe of God, and the, tribe of, the half tribe of Manasseh. The half tribe of Manasseh and the Reubenites and the Gadites, they were interested them remaining on the eastward side of the rivers of Jordan, you know, of Golan Heights. The place is well watered. It was fertile to feed their flocks and also for them to live. Nothing wrong with that. God had already given them the land. If they desire so to be on this eastern side of Jordan, well and good. But Joshua calls them to instruct them and to tell them that there is work ahead and that you can leave your wives and all the possessions that you have, but send your army men that they may tag along the other tribes. They may go help them fight their enemies. You realize as you interact with the book of Joshua that we had the central campaign. That as they started attacking the land of promise, they started with the central campaign. It's not the, the usual campaign that we have, ya kutafla kiti ya kuchaguliwa, no. But now the military terms of campaign. So they had to start by them attacking the city of Jericho and the city of Ai. That was the central campaign. After the central campaign, they were to move southward, displacing, destroying, killing, wiping away all the tribes on the south part of the land of Canaan. That was the southern campaign. And later they were to march towards the northern part, the northern campaign. And so this is how their military strategy was. And so Joshua has gathered all these tribes and is addressing them and giving them instructions. And it's upon these tribes them to pay careful instruct, uh, attend, to pay, you know, to be attentive to the instructions of Joshua. And to realize we as church Christ 
every Sunday and every other day, because every day is the day of the Lord, he gathers us to instruct us. And it's our responsibility as a people, as a church, for us to pay careful attention to his precepts. And so Joshua gathers all these groups and he instructs them as God had instructed him. So Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare you victuals for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan. So they are by the rivers of Jordan. And remember, he is about to send the spies to the land of Canaan, two spies, and they will bring back a report. And based on this report, which again was positive, unlike the 10 spies who brought a negative report, the spies who were sent by Moses, they bring a positive report that the dwellers of this land of Canaan, they tremble in the presence of our God. The dwellers of, of the land of Canaan, they were not afraid of the children of Israel, but they were afraid of the children of Israel because God was with them. The enemy is not afraid of any one of us. He is afraid of you because Christ liveth in you. Enemy is not afraid of the church. He is afraid of the church because of the captain of the church. He is with us. And therefore we have no reason to fear. We have no reason to be terrified in the presence of our enemies because Christ has already given us our inheritance. And as we interact with the book of Joshua, it will be prudent for us to understand that the church is not Israel in the Bible. And Israel is not the church. These are two distinctive groups of people God is dealing with. Israel is Israel and church is church. Though we are children of Abraham by faith, but we have children of Abraham biologically. So these are two distinctive groups of people God is dealing with. And so God is calling the children of Israel and is addressing them. I'd like us to see great contrast between the commander of the armies of Israel and the commander of the armies of the church. Joshua was wanting, but our commander, Jesus Christ, he is perfect in all ways. Joshua was limited, but Jesus, our true Joshua, is not limited to time, to space. Joshua was a sinner, but Jesus, our true Joshua, he is sinless. In him there is no infirmities, there is no, you know, blemish, but perfection. Joshua was to wait for God to instruct him. Jesus, our true Joshua, is the one who instructs. He is the very God. Joshua died, but Jesus Christ lives eternally. Joshua was limited, but Jesus is not limited in any way. And I'd like us to read together the book, uh, the words in Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, I read. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these day, last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will not be to him a father. I will be to him a father, sorry, and he shall be to me a son. And again, 
when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers the flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hast hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy ears shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he, at any time sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? God, who at sundry times in old days spoke to his people through limited means, through appointed channels, his prophets, but this day God is not speaking to us through them, but he's speaking to us through his son, Jesus Christ, who is our commander. Their revelation was in part, but today as a church we are privileged to have a revelation which is complete. That which was in part now is complete. We have the whole counsel of God within our reach. How blessed are we, how privileged are we as a people. And so God revealed his word to Joshua. The same God who revealed his word to Joshua is still the same God who reveals his word to his people. He reveals himself to us as a church, as a congregation. When we open the pages of the Bible, we meet him there. We encounter the person of the Lord Jesus Christ there. He is Christ, the word is Christ in writing. What we have this day is Jesus Christ in writing. You want to know him? You want to know God? You have his word. So saints in old waited for God to speak to them so that they can know the next move to make. But we as a church, we don't wait because God has already revealed himself to us. We know which step to make. We don't have to wait for other instructions. He has already instructed us as a congregation. And his instructions, we find them in his word, which is living, perfect, ever kept pure throughout all ages. And therefore, we as a church, we derive our command and our authority from his word. His word serves to be the standard, serves to be the canon, the measuring rod that we have as a congregation, as a church. So we don't have God's word plus men's words. But God's word alone is sufficient to instruct us. We want to know how to govern a church. We want to know how to fellowship. We want to know how to live as a congregation, as a people. He has instructed us in his word. We want to know how to live a victorious Christian life. All this we find in his word, which makes us wise unto salvation. And we see Joshua calling the children of Israel to instruct them. Let's see how they responded to his address. How did they respond to his address? Verse 16. And they answered Joshua saying, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sentest us, we will go. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whithersoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandments, and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong 
and of a good courage. This is a congregation responding to Joshua. And this is how we, as a church, we should respond to God's word, to Jesus' address. We see them promising him obedience. We see them praying that the Lord will be with him, Joshua. We see them passing an act to make it death for any Israelite who disobeys Joshua's words. We see them committing to joyfully do the work of the ministry. And this is a good response that we should all borrow and imitate as a congregation. They pledge obedience. In the book of Samuel, we see that God is not delighted by those who come to him with just lip service, but those who observe to do his counsel, those who obey his word. He obeys and he loves, he honors those who come to him, having paid careful respect and honor to his word. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Most of the times when we go before God, we think that it's just a matter of us appearing and doing the religious activities. We just come to church, sing, give our offering, and think that we have done everything, we just walk out. But I'll pose this question to all of us. Are we obedient to his word? Do you give it careful attention? Does God's word have a hold in your heart? Do you observe to do everything that he has commanded in his word? For you to have a prosperous life, for us to have, you know, a good success as a church, as a congregation, as believers, we must observe to do everything that he has commanded us as a people. There is no success to the disobedient. There is no blessedness to the disobedient. In the book of Psalm chapter 1, blessed is the man, you know the verse, there is no shortcut to blessedness. Obedience is everything. God loves people who are obedient. So they promise obedient. And so we see the nation of Israel was created by God. And church is for those who have been called out of the world into his kingdom. God himself initiated the calling of his servant Abraham. Abraham is, the, is not the one who saw the need of him turning to God. But God himself called him and told him to move from the Ur of Chaldee. And God makes all these promises to bless him, promise of a seed, promise, you know, of nation, promise of land to his servant Abraham. And we see him promising him that your descendants shall be slaves in a foreign land. And we see God promising that I will deliver them after a period of time. And God for sure, he delivered his people from Egyptian slavery. And God, we see in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, promising the children of Israel that upon obeying my words, I will honor you. There were blessings which were attached to them obeying God's word. There were curses which were attached by them dishonoring God's word. And so God is not a respecter of anybody. He's not a respecter of a person, a deacon, a member of a church. He's a God who honors his words and he loves people who give his word careful attention. And therefore, we see a congregation being called by God, led by God, governed by God. The nation of Israel was to be a theocratic nation. They are God, governed by God. And we as a church... We must remember that it is God who called us out of the world. It is not we who got tired of being out. It is him who made us alive in his son Jesus Christ when we were dead in trespasses and sins. And therefore he called us and as he called us we have instructions in his kingdom, in his family. Every household has instructions and in the household of God, we have the Bible which serves to instruct us, which serves 
as a rule, as a measure, as the rod of standard. And so we as Christians, we must remember, we as a church, that we should be a theocratic people, people who are governed by God. Our constitution is God's word and delighting in observing to do everything that the Lord has commanded us in his word. And so church is individuals who have been saved by God, saved from God, and saved for God. This is what we are, and this is what the nation of Israel was supposed to be. Saved by God, saved from God, saved for God. Can we say, you know, many of the times when we are giving our own personal testimonies, we say that I am born again and Christ is Lord over my life. Do we understand what Lord is most of the times when you use that word? It means that he is your master and you are his slave. You draw your instructions from him. And we as a church, we must acknowledge that God is our master. He is our owner. He is the one who owns us. And therefore, we should honor him with our lives. So church is a purchased possession of Christ. He purchased it with his precious blood. So... How should church respond to Jesus, our Joshua? In John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do you love him? Do I love him? Do we love him? It's easy to say that we love him, but come to think about it. Do you observe, do we observe to do everything that he has instructed us in his word? Loving him is not just lip service, but our lives, the way you live from Sunday to Sunday, your conversation, your work, your conduct. Do you honor him? Do we honor him? Is he our master? Like, can God give a testimony of you as an individual, of us? Like we see in the book of Job, he's giving a testimony of his servant Job. Can he give a testimony of us as a congregation? He loves those who keep his commands, his commandments. And therefore, we as a church, we must remember that the Bible is our rule for obedience. No extra biblical sources. And when God is giving his instruction to his servant Joshua, he's very specific that success will only come if you pay careful attention to my word. Not to wise men sitting down and adding some other things or omitting other things. God was very specific. Victory to us as a church will only come if we hold high his word, if we respect him, if we honor his word, and therefore the Bible is full of duty obedience passages. Our duty as Christians is to obey nothing more, nothing less. Our duty is to obey his word for us to have a prosperous life and for us to have, you know, a good success. Obeying God's word. We don't obey God's word to merit our salvation. Not that. It's not a legalism thing. The children of Israel were not to obey the words from God's servant Joshua to merit their salvation. Joshua was a saved person and therefore his obedience was flowing out of his love for God. We obey him, we follow his instructions because of our love for him. It's not a legalism thing. It's not we obey, he saves us. No, he has already saved us if we have believed in him for salvation. And therefore, our obedience is because of the great understanding that we have of him. Out of great love that we have for him. 
So we keep the law of God as an expression of gratitudeness. We observe to do everything that he has instructed us as an expression of gratitude that God has saved us by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, for the glory of God alone. Obedience should not be burdensome. Obedience should not be, you know, troublesome to us. But if you understand the extent that Jesus Christ went to ransom you, then you will obey him. You will find delight and joy in observing to do everything that he has instructed us as a congregation. Christ requires us to obey him, to do things that please him, and refrain from doing things that displease him. Obeying God's word is not legalism. What we do is not meriting, but responding. Our lives must be responding lives, lives full of gratitude. Responding because you understand of his greatness, of his goodness. One who purchased you with his own precious blood. One who saw you when you were dead in trespasses and sins. And just like he called, he called Lazarus, he called you and me by your name. And you came from that tomb and he made you alive. Our lives must be responding lives. We have not been saved by our own obedience. We will not be saved by our own obedience. But we have been saved unto the life of obedience. Not saved by works, but saved unto works. If you know him, if you understand him, then you will delight in serving him. And so the children of Israel, they are responding. They understood how this far that God has brought them. They knew of his greatness, of his goodness, and therefore they were responding to that. God wants us to be a theocratic people. God governed church. As I conclude, remember he saved us. He made us his people, not because we are any better than others. We don't know. It's not because we are any better than others who don't know about him, but it's because of his love, simply his love. You're not better than your relatives, our relatives, who depart this side of eternity having not known the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it's by grace, through faith in Christ, for God's glory alone. It is not because you know how to decide to follow Jesus. It is not because we know how to make good decision. It's not because we know how to read the Bible and interpret it. It is because of his mercies, because of his grace. And therefore, having this good understanding, we must respond correctly to the address of our master. Every day he gathers us in this place and he addresses us. Are we a people who are willing to respond correctly to our master's call? He instructed them that they stay in this place for a period of three days and after this they were to march by the rivers of Jordan and enter into the territory of promise. Are we a people who are obedient? Are we obedient enough to know of God's timing and to know of his will? God's timing and his will, these are twins, you cannot separate them. You understand of God's mind. Yes, it is his will, but it is it his timing. God instructed them, he told them that you will cross over, but you have to come in this place for three days, and that they did. Do we understand of God's mind? Do we know of his will? And do we know of his timing? Just like the children of Israel knew of their promises, you and we as a church, do we know of the promises that Christ has given us as a church? And when we go before him, do we pray in line with God's mind? We should pledge our allegiance to his word. They pledged their allegiance to Joshua's word. 
what you will say we will do. Where you send us, we will go. And this is how we should respond to our master's call. Wherever he leads, we go. Wherever he sends us, we go. And doing this out of delight, they delighted. They pass an art to make it death for any Israelite who disobeyed Joshua's words. They commit to go with cheerfulness, understanding that this is work of God. Do we serve with cheerfulness in the department where you are? And to all of us, we belong to the army of God. And service is not just for few believers. Service is for all of us. Service is not for those who sit in the front benches. Service is for all of us, you and me. You remember the famous song, I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. This was not a song which was sung by church leaders, but everyone. We belong to the army of the Lord. Though there are people who have distinctive roles within the body of Christ, but we must remember that we are all soldiers in the army of the Lord. And you must fight your battle well, manifold, observing to do everything that he has asked you to do. As I conclude, God hates those who don't give heed to his counsel. In the book of Luke chapter 6, Jesus says, Why call me Lord, Lord? and do not do what I command. It's easy for us to gather here every day and to call him Lord, Lord, but we don't observe to do that which he commands us. To the children of Israel, when they crossed the rivers of Jordan and they started their battle, their first assignment was to address the city of Jericho. After that victory, they went to attack the city of Ai without waiting for God to instruct them. And they faced great defeat. Why? God had not instructed them to go and attack the city of Ai. It was God's will, but it was not his timing. We must wait for God to speak. We must wait for him to instruct us. Otherwise, when we instruct and lead ourselves by the arm of the flesh, having confidence in our flesh, just like they did, we have fought Jericho. It is down. Now let us go and attack the city of Ai. We will not wait for God to speak. We know that we are able. We have mighty man of well, of valor. And so they went by their own, the strength of flesh, and they were beaten, they were killed, and they were ashamed. Paying careful attention to God's word is very important. It's one thing for God to send you, and one, another thing for you to send yourself. You will come back ashamed wounded but if you learn if we learn to listen carefully from his word then we won't be ashamed because we will confidently say we have done that which our master has commanded us to do as a church there are blessings to those who pay careful attention to his word someone a victorious church draws its instructions from its lord and not men Always remember, let every man be a liar and God true. God was true, he instructed them, but they sat down and instructed themselves and they faced great defeat and shame. The famous verse in the book of Joshua, you choose this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our God does not take side with us. It is we who take side. We must choose to serve him. We must choose to pay careful attention to his precept. He will not give us victory if we disobey and dishonor him. 
If we obey him, if we honor him, he will honor us before men. God's work, as I finish, done in God's ways, lacks no God's blessings. God's work, done in God's ways, lacks no God's blessings. Shall we pray? Our God who art in heaven, we say thank you because of your word which makes us wise unto salvation. May you help us this day just like you did to Joshua that we may hide your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you that we may observe to do everything that you've commanded us to do that we may have prosperous lives and good success in this life. May you forgive us for we are not different like the congregation that you gave to Moses at stiff naked people. May you help us this day that we may pledge our allegiance to obey you and to honor your counsel. May you help us as a congregation, as a church that we may love you above all, that we may honor you and not men, that we may fear you and not men, that we may observe to do that which you've called us to do, O oh God. May you give us strength that we may continue to trust and to obey you. And may your name be glorified in our lives. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Victor, for that reflection. Um, I am particularly uh, interested by how through uh, their preaching, he labored on the plurality, not the uh, singular of um, the pronouns, those we, which refers to the body of Christ. So, um, a number of reflections about how we should respond. And now the assignment is on the we. Not just you as an individual, but we as the body of Christ. How do we come together and work together in response to these demands that Christ is making? You know, in First John 4, 7, Christ says, Dear friends, um, I, I, I like the idea of uh, reflecting um, where I work at. Uh, most of the times when um, the boss is around, you realize people are moving um, by themselves, which is, is something that happens almost in every place. Um, now imagine when my boss would come and then call us dear friends, you know. Uh, that that kind of hits different, which is the same again to you. When, when Christ, who is your God, calls you dear friend, he says now in First John 4, 7, dear friends, let us, so he identifies himself as part of this body of his, um, as we learn from in Corinthians. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Then in verse 8 he says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So it's interesting how he calls us um, friends and how he gives us a very um, precise uh, way to know whether we are part of him or not part of him. So I'm reminding you, um, ensure you know somebody, um, ensure you enjoy the offertory uh, song that will be played here with somebody. You've been sitting through the service by yourself, now start um, giving room for someone. Uh, greet somebody whom you don't know after the service. If need be for time, you can enter the multi-purpose hall. Kunaviti zimepangu uko just for the purpose of you guys interacting. Um, Immediately after, we will have Kiswahili service. And, but if you need more time, at a time your refreshment is potosha, sasa enda na mtu mkunyo kahawa. Yes, I'm saying coffee because I love coffee. But come on, when you are chai, uh, when you are sleepover, do these things as all of us reflect on um, uh, this work that Christ has called us to. I will ask the present worship team to uh, come. 
and take us through um, the Ofato recession, I'll request us to stand kindly. Um, the projection team, you can give us the pay bill number. If you have cash, you can drop it at any of the offertory baskets um, in any of the exits closest to you. Uh, for the pay bill number, the number is 582-800. Uh, it's going to be projected, and I'm going to buy at least a minute for those who are giving through um, uh, the pay bill number to do so. And if you're giving through a mode which is not um, uh, within any of the ones that I've presented, after the service, you can um, come straight ahead to the church office, and the secretary can assist you in whichever um, other way you want to uh, give through. Asante sana. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with um, what we have given unto you, Lord. Thank you for these resources. Thank you, Lord, for the chance to give to you. Thank you, Lord, that at times we lack, and some of us may not have been able to give. Uh, we ask that you enable us, Lord, every time. And most of all, we are very grateful for just this privilege, you know, to come to you uh, through giving. We receive all glory and honor. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. I wish to remind... Um, our visitors, that the ushers are waiting for you so that they can take you to um, our hospitality um, um, a place of uh, uh, interaction. So feel free, um, any of the black uh, gentlemen or ladies outside there. Thank you so much. I want to invite the pastor for the benediction. 
uh, shall we say, say the word of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden.